All right, this is number five from the 2010 Form B Calc B C exam, and um, I mean it's just a problem about functions, but it requires kind of a lot of thought. Uh, so the first part is we need to find the absolute maximum um, and absolute minimum if they exist for this function on the interval from zero to infinity. Um, so obviously derivative. So the derivative of this is bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the uh, bottom squared. All right, now we want to clean this up, so I'm going to distribute in the numerator. Do, do, do. And keep going, so I'm going to collect like terms in the numerator. And there's a that's the formula derivative I'm going to work with. You could take a 4 out if you want in the numerator. All right, so I need g prime of x equals 0, or be undefined, but it's never undefined. Um, so that means that the numerator is equal to 0, which means that 16x squared equals 4, which means that x squared equals 1 fourth, which means that x is 1 half because x needs to be greater than 0. All right, so we only have one critical point. So let's look at what happens. Well, g prime of x is greater than 0 when x is um, between 0 and 1 half. To figure that out, take something like, um, I don't know, 1 over a million and substitute it into g prime, and you can see that the 1 over a million makes that minus 16 x squared just go away, um, so we get a positive. And g prime of x is less than 0 for x greater than 1 half. Uh, plug in a billion and see what happens. You get a very negative number. Um, well, in the numerator, you'll, you almost get 0, but you get a very negative number in the numerator. Um, therefore, the absolute maximum must occur at x equals 1 half. The question says to find the absolute maximum, so the absolute maximum is actually uh, g of 1 half, which if you plug 1 half into g of x, it's 4 times 1 half is 2 in the numerator, and then 1 plus uh, 4 times 1 half squared is 4, so you end up with 2 in the denominator, so 2 over 2, which is 1. And then uh, there actually is no absolute minimum, and that's because of the interval that we're on, uh, maybe. But definitely there is no absolute minimum. Um, and g of x gets kind of arbitrarily close to zero, but it never actually reaches zero. And uh, maybe let's explain that a little bit more. So if you look at the limit as x approaches zero from the right of g of x, uh, g of x is actually a continuous function uh, if you don't limit the domain. So you can just substitute 0 in and you get 0. So the limit as you approach 0 from the right is 0. Also if you take the limit as x approaches infinity to see what's happening in that direction on the domain, uh, you get 0 because the denominator is much higher powered. Well, one higher power, but that's all that makes a difference. Um, so if we start graphing this, we know that at 1 half it reaches 1. Uh, we know we're going to get an open circle at 0, 0. And we know that the function increases from 0 to 1 half, so I'm just going to sketch that in. Uh, we also know from our previous work that g prime is less than 0 um, for x greater than 1 half. So uh, there must be a point of inflection somewhere. I obviously didn't go through and find it, but the curve looks something like this. So it gets close to 0, but it never gets to 0. Um, so that's just to explain why there's no absolute minimum. Uh, but if you go back to the previous screen, that would have been my solution. I wouldn't actually have explained all this. All right, moving on to the next part. Uh, we are looking for the area bounded by x equals 1 to infinity. So the first quadrant region from 1 to infinity. So that's why I have an integral from 1 to infinity. Um, it's bounded on the top by f of x, which is 1 over x. So um, 1 over x minus uh, on the bottom by g of x. So we have this and then a dx. Um, so what I need to do is I need to evaluate this uh, improper integral, so I need to use proper notation. So the limit is b approaches infinity. The antiderivative 1 over x is natural log of the absolute value of x. Um, now the second part of this, I'm going to do a u substitution over here quickly. Uh, u is 1 plus 4x squared, so du is 8x dx, which means 1 half du is 4x dx. So that converts the original integral into... Um, one half the integral of du over u. So I end up with here minus uh, one half the natural log of whatever u was, which was one plus four x squared. And then we're gonna evaluate that from one to b. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm using properties of logs. 
So subtraction becomes division and coefficients become exponents um, to bring me there. And now I have to evaluate this. So it'll be the limit as b approaches infinity. I'm going to substitute in b to get that. And then minus, substitute in 1, and you just end up with the natural log of 1 over radical 5, which I'm just going to leave as that. Um, now I need to evaluate this limit. Um, the part that has a b in it actually is the problem. So um, if you look at it, you see b over radical 1 plus 4b squared. If b approaches infinity, that just approaches 1 half or 1 over radical 4. Um, so this becomes a natural log of 1 half minus the natural log of 1 over radical 5. Um, and I'm going to explain uh, that limit a little more uh, in two different ways. One kind of analytical that uh, most people probably aren't going to like. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to factor the thing inside the radical as b squared and then the quantity 1 over b squared plus 4. And if you look at that and distribute the b squared, you're back to the original. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is uh, radical b squared is the absolute value of b, and then times radical 1 over b squared plus 4. Um, now I'm approaching infinity, so I know that b is positive, so I can replace absolute value of b with just plain b. So I'm going to change that to b, and then that radical. Uh, I can cancel the b's. And you can see the analytical solution to this takes a while. Uh, and now if b approaches infinity, I just get 1 over radical 4, and I know that that's 1 half. Um, let me give you a different way of thinking about it which is a little easier. As b approaches infinity, radical 1 plus 4b squared kind of approaches uh, radical 4b squared because the 1 becomes insignificant as you go to infinity, and that is definitely 2b. Um, therefore, as b approaches infinity, b over radical 1 plus 4b squared should approach b over 2b, which is 1 half. And uh, so that's how I would handle that limit. Anyway, uh, there's a lot of thinking involved in this problem, but not so much doing. So uh, I hope you found the discussion of it helpful, and uh, good luck as you study.